Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our second class. This week we will learn about variables and calculations. A variable is an identifier which stores some kind of data. We create a variable by using the var keyword, which is lowercase, followed by the name that we are giving to the variable. We use the assignment operator, which is the equal sign, to assign a value to that variable. Technically, this is called initializing the variable because we have given it a value at the same time we have created it. In this example, var, my name equals Teresa, we have the var keyword, the name to identify that variable, the assignment operator, which is the equal sign, the value that I have given be, to be stored in that variable. Notice that the value is enclosed in quotation marks because it is a text literal and our JavaScript statement always ends with a semicolon. When you create a variable you are assigning the value from the right to the left. Spaces do not matter around the equal sign. Or, and you can have many spaces between the keyword var and the name of the variable also. Notice that if we have quotations around the value, it indicates a literal or string. We do not put quotations around a number because a number is primarily used for calculations. When we create a variable name, it must begin with a letter, the dollar sign, or the underscore. It cannot begin with a number, but it can contain a number. It cannot contain spaces, punctuation, mathematical or logical operators. It cannot be a JavaScript reserved word, such as the keyword var. You will use either the camel case syntax or the underscore syntax if the variable name contains more than one word. Remember that JavaScript is case sensitive. So here is an example on the left of using the camel case syntax where the first letter of the second or third or fourth word is capitalized. In the right hand column we have the underscore notation. So you can declare a variable and then later on you can initialize it or assign a value to it. Or you can declare and initialize at the same time. You can declare many variables at once and the names of those variables are separated by a comma. You can also declare and initialize many variables at once and here again the name value pairs are separated by commas. In JavaScript, the type of data that is stored in the variable is determined by the way it is used. Variables can contain numeric values, such as a whole number, a decimal, or a negative, or an exponential. They can contain string values, such as a, a text literal or an empty character or they can contain boolean type data 
which means that the value would return true or false. Variables also have scope. The scope indicates where the variables are valid. Essentially, variables exist where they are created. At this point, they are created globally. When we learn about functions, we can create a variable inside a function, which will be available only within that function. In JavaScript, we have the traditional arithmetic operators, the plus sign for addition, the minus sign for subtraction, the asterisk for multiplication, the forward slash for division, and the percent sign for modulus. Modulus is the remainder of this expression. We also have what are called unary operators. The plus plus, which adds or increments 1 to the value. The minus minus, which subtracts 1 from the value. So the expression x plus plus would increment the value of x by 1. Notice there is no equal sign in, in this type of operator. We also have the shorthand operators, such as plus equal, minus equal, asterisk equal, slash equal. So let's take an example of what these operators do. To start a basic equal sign, or the assignment operator, assigns the value from what is on the right to the left. Plus equal does the same thing but it also, on the right-hand side, adds the starting value. The minus will do the same thing, add the starting value, and then subtract, etc. In JavaScript, there is an order of precedence of which operators are executed first. The plus plus and the minus minus are of the top order of precedence. Multiplication and division are next. Addition and subtraction are last. If you use parentheses to group expressions, the expression in the parentheses will be performed and then the other operators will be performed next. Concatenation. To concatenate essentially means to join or put together. The plus sign, which is used for addition to add numbers, can also be used to concatenate or join strings. For example, if I were adding 1 plus 1 to numbers, the result would be 2. If I were to add 3 plus a text literal, because we can't add a number and text, JavaScript would concatenate these two values. Therefore, it would join them or put them together side by side. For example, the, the literal fire plus fox would be one word Firefox. Should we wish to have a space between those two words, we can also concatenate with the plus sign. Sometimes in JavaScript you need to convert from one type of data to another. The parseInt function, which is a function of the JavaScript language, parses a string or a number and returns an integer. The parseFloat function also parses that string or number and returns a floating point or decimal. We also have the toString method, which will convert a number into a string. 
So let's take a look at the parseInt function. In our example, we have a value for the variable num. In our second line of code, we are using the parseInt function. Notice it takes a parameter, which is the variable that we want to parse, essentially. So we are performing that function and storing the new value back into the original variable. If we were to test that value using an alert, we would see that the result is 1, 2, 3. The toString method converts a number to a string. In this example, I have two variables. Num1 holds a value of 1, and I am converting that to a string. It will still be 1, but JavaScript will look at it as a literal rather than a number to be added. Notice the syntax of the, of the toString method. It does not take any parameters, and it is a method of the number object. My second variable, num2, holds the value 2. If I were to add these, JavaScript would concatenate them, and I would have the number 12. The toFix method of the number object, which is part of the JavaScript language, allows us to format a number. Technically, it converts the number into a string and it allows us to format it to a specific number of decimals as entered in the parentheses. So if we look at the example, we have a value for our variable num, and the toFixed method in our dot syntax, syntax num.toFixed, the toFixed method takes a parameter, which is the number of decimal points that you want to round it to, and if I were to use an alert to test this value, it would round it to 5.57. So this is technically a formatting characteristic. So if you were doing calculations with numbers, you would leave the numbers as long decimals throughout the calculation process. At the very end, before you write to the page, you would format them. Don't format them first because it converts them to a string and then JavaScript will concat rather than add. All right, how do we test our variables? The Firebug add-on for Firefox, which is also available for other browsers, has a very nice little um, window that allows us to write expressions using the console.log method. So we can output the value of a variable or, exp or expression. We also can use the editor and test in the browser, which is what we use to write the code, by using alerts. Sometimes you want to put some information in the alert so that you know what you're testing. And this is how you might do it. 